Uh, welcome to all viewers to this fireside chat. I'm really excited to be here today with uh, Paul Rankin. Um, Paul and I, we've, we've worked together previously um, and um, we'll be talking today through some of the, the use cases that Paul has encountered um, in previous experiences and current um, clients that he's um, consulting and uh, really also with a strong focus on the role that data security and trust plays in this. I'm really excited to have you here, Paul. Let's get started. So, uh, Paul, we're talking about data sharing today. And one of the common questions that clients always ask us, right, is like, how, how do you build a business case around data sharing? Why is it so important and hugely beneficial to, to, to the business? And um, I, I'd love for you to share um, some experiences from, from your career as to like why I think data sharing is, is so important and how it can help organizations reach their, their strategic goals. Yeah, I've got a really good example of that, actually. Um, we did a lot of work with the Scottish government agencies um, in the past and specifically around, you know, I suppose the police, the NHS and the social agency in, in Scotland. And you know, it, it was really difficult to get those government organisations to share data because, you know, the data was isolated in, in some on-premise data centre. Imagine there was one scenario where we thought, well, if we, let's take, maybe take a child that is maybe at risk of, you know, maybe domestic abuse, for example. Um, maybe they've been in trouble with the police, for example. Maybe their parents have been in trouble with the police. Maybe they've visited the hospital three or four times in the last, you know, month even. And maybe there's been, you know, calls to their house from the social services. Now, if you can tie all this information up, yeah, and trigger maybe an alert, uh, an early warning, you know, to the, the, the relevant people that, that need that early warning, this could essentially be the, the, the difference in saving a child's life. But imagine if you could, you know, in, in some way anonymize that data so that it, you could share and you could really pinpoint, you know, alerts to save, you know, children's lives. And, and that is... I think what makes the huge difference really. We've come to a, a point where there's so much data, um, you have to judge, you know, yourself if the, or the, the user of the consumer of that data has to make a, um, a judgment if they can trust this data, if they can then, you know, build insights or decisions on this data. And I think that when it comes to trust, I, I think, and so recently there's been a big huge to data products, as you, uh, you probably know, that the data product concept in itself, you know, brings a characteristic called trustworthiness, for, for example. You need to be able to prove that you're providing data um, and prove to your consumers that it's trustworthy for example. So you're not just providing data for them to access, but you're providing metrics to tell them, actually, this is why you can trust it. Um, you've obviously been consulting companies um, for, for many, many years. What is your observation as to like the maturity of companies being able to internal data sharing and some of the common blockers that, that you observe? And in your opinion, what is needed to kind of like remove these blockers and really to get like this internal data sharing right? Because that's key, right? Before then actually moving to more of like even external facing data sharing. I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've come a long way, but I think the concept still ex or the problems still exist when you have a large organization with lots of, of disparate affiliates. So lots of affiliates in different countries around the world with not very, I suppose, advanced technologies. But they're collecting data and take, for example, we worked for an organization quite recently that has this concept of, of primary sales and secondary sales. So, you know, the, the primary sales are essentially, you know, what they are selling direct to, you know, consumers. And the secondary sales are usually through affiliates or, you know, agents, for example. Um, and a lot of these agents, you know, do not have the, the network you know, in, the, in different countries, they don't have the technology, they don't have the ability to then share back their, you know, their secondary sales data. At some point, yes, maybe they collect the data, they send, they, they capture it and send it somehow to them. But, you know, that is very time consuming and, and it's often very, um, a very expensive process for them if they're a small affiliate. 
and it's really you know difficult to do that and and securely as as well companies still still struggle with this this affiliate type of organization and company i'm working with just now in, in switzerland here actually we were they were struggling on a use case because they, it was a supply chain use case essentially what they're doing is they're um, they're providing a, a, a material, like a, a substance, to another organization who is then selling it on to another organization and eventually ends up in some huge organization in one of their, you, you know, branded um, material, drinks materials. Yeah. But because of the supply chain and the, the different subsidiaries and secondary resellers, that it went through, it's impossible for to get the data back on exactly how much they're selling at the end of the day. And that then, you know, affects their supply chain because they don't know how much substance or material to really purchase and process because they don't know what the backlog is and what's coming down the pipeline. <laughs> Moving to the cloud has helped a lot when it comes to data sharing. That's absolutely no question there. But also you know, the, these controls that you need to put in to get the data in a secure way to the right people that can see it. And, and, and I think this is, you know, combined with the technology, but also with the mindset and the controls of sharing at the heart before you even start doing something, you know, a use case, a data product, whether it's a data warehouse, a data lake, whatever, you know, you need to have this data sharing mindset right at the start in the heart of it and and i think that companies are starting to understand that and working with the right people i think is is key to to really accelerate this process i think that companies you know yes they, they like the thought of it sharing data and and they can see absolutely the benefit it makes sense um but i still think they are a little bit weary most companies you know whether it's giving away some competitive advantage, whether it's a breach, maybe, you know, a data leak or a breach of security or whatever, I think still think they're a little bit apprehensive and many companies just will maybe refuse to do it, you know, rather than than taking the risk or, you know, of, of, of sharing data. And I think that if they understood we have capabilities, we have tools in place, we have technologies in place to lower this risk. So this brings with it an added level of confidence, absolutely. And you know, if we can if we can get to there, you know, that where companies say, okay, the benefit of sharing data far outweighs the risk which you know it does bring. Absolutely we you know we need to get there. And I don't think we're fully there yet in the industry. Um, I think, you know, we've got a long way to go. But I absolutely would help, you know, if organizations, if companies can use tools, technologies, processes, you know, to, to de-risk, as you said, de-risk this process. Mm -hmm.